Um, going back, how did you get in trouble with the FBI? Uh, okay, so um, the first time in 1989, which is another reason why I ended up in Italy, uh, <laughs> Cargill, I think it was Cargill, went to the, no, Archer McDaniels maybe, went to the FBI and they said, you know, we're getting ripped Who's off. Who's Archer McDaniels? There are this huge company that owns more farmland probably than anyone in the world. More than Bill Gates? Uh, Just kidding. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. Um, anyway, there were some c- complaints that at the Chicago Board of Trade, um, they were being ripped off. And the government decided to go infiltrate the Board of Trade and the Mercantile Exchange with FBI agents who bought memberships, lied about their names, and it's hilarious. They actually bought memberships, and it's great because when you sign to buy a membership, it said that anything that you say must be the truth, and if not, you're breaking the law. Uh, So the FBI did that, and they infiltrated the exchange floors, and they started getting people, trapping people, entrapment to break the rules. And uh, luckily for me, uh, I got a call, and it was from a higher-up guy, um, not in the FBI, but uh, in uh, the administration at the uh, Board of Trade in the Mercantile Exchange. And he said, Pat, uh, come to my office. I said, yeah. My firm, uh, Bridgeport Securities, we were like the largest soybean traders in the soybean option pit at the time. He said, the FBI's on the floor. And we had heard rumors about it, but the uh, president of the Board of Trade and the Merck denied that they were there. And so nobody kind of thought it was just rumors. I left the next day for Italy. (sighs) And, in fact, they took one of the guys that worked for us. He actually didn't work for us. He was on our our company insurance, and he filled paper in the soybean pit. They went to to his house at 3 o'clock at night, scared him, scared his kids, said, if you don't flip... You're going to go to jail. You'll lose your wife. She'll divorce you. You'll never see your kids. Um, and his name is Tom. I won't give his last name. He ended up going and doing five years in jail. His wife divorced him while he was in jail. Of course, he didn't see his kids. Um, and they got him for what was called bucket trading. Bucket was, trading? Yeah, it was a joke. So at the end of the trading day at 115, brokers would end up having uh, orders to buy and sell. And if they were time-stamped, before one fourteen thirty, that broker had to fill that order. So it was a big risk for him. So he would walk around the pit and say, hey, Pat, I got to buy six. And we'd say, oh, I sold you six. We'd use the price of the close, but it was a way of transferring risk from the floor broker, who, for the most part, didn't make a lot of money on, tra- on these uh, commissions. And we transferred the risk to traders, trader groups like my own. He ended up doing five years for it. It was just a joke, and uh, that was the first time I went to Italy. So my son was born in 90, uh, and then my second son in 91. Um, the FBI made a bunch of phone calls to my office. They didn't try to extradite me. Back then, I think it would have been a more difficult. And I was, like I said, I was on Oprah. I was in Playgirl magazine in 89. You know, they wanted a guy like me, a big fish. Wow. And, and you've been, and how long, and then when you moved there to Italy in 90, you said? Yeah. I, yes. Uh, in 89, I left for a couple of years and then we moved back. My son did experimental medicine, but because of that, we moved back to Italy and so basically what, cemented us there. So when you moved to Italy, you basically retired? No, I mean, I'm the, you know, I'm the founder of the pharmaceutical company, uh, San Rocco Therapeutics, uh, which is like my full-time thing, but I'm also singer songwriter. But that started after when your after your son, son was born, born. which yes. was so. so I what went, was your plan when you moved to Italy? Yeah, so I went to Italy because I knew the markets were going electronic. So Europe had the first electronic markets. So mm. we were trading on the Sofix, which was the Swiss Options Futures Exchange, and the Eurex, which first was the Deutsche Termin Borsa, and then the Eurex. So we were already invading Europe because we thought that it would go all go electronic. So we had American traders in Europe and going back and forth. Okay. And then when I found out in 89, so we already had operations there. Um, but then in 89, when we found out the FBI was entrapping people on the Chicago Board of Trade, I left because I knew they wanted a guy just like me. Mm. And I, there's nothing good you can do for anyone when the FBI questions you. You're not going to help anyone. 
um, because they don't want to help you. They don't want the truth. They just want to put people in jail. Exactly. So they can get promotions or they yeah. can, you know, whatever it is. So, and then when my son, my two oldest two sons were born there, and then eventually the third was born there as well. But then we were doing experimental medicine in the United States and decided we had to stay in Italy so that my son could do the experimental medicine. Mm. And so then there we were. And then the second FBI investigation happened in around 98, I think it was called the... Uh, Operation Ghost Payroll or something, if I'm not mistaken, or Grey Lord, whatever it was. But um, I uh, had a, 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 an Italian-American who I helped fund to become a, a senator, state senator and committeeman in the southwest side of Chicago. And um, he eventually got investigated. Um, and I was the money behind him, supposedly. Um, it was a great story, by the way. It was an all-Polish ward. Um, he was Italian, you know, like I, I'll never forget. I went to, uh, the committeeman at the time who was Polish, of course, but living full time in Florida and, uh, telling him, yeah, we want to get Bobby. Bobby is going to become, you know, the committeeman. And he was like 83. So he didn't care. And, you know, we said, we'll have a party for you. You'll make at least a hundred thousand at your politically po political party. We'll hire your daughter. And he still thought it was a joke that we'd never get an Italian elected in an all, all Polish ward. Um, and then on the deadline of the election, uh, the genius behind it all named Greg, uh, got seven people. So the guy we went against, I can't remember his name. I'm going to say it was Kowalczak. So the day that, that you had to have your name in the election, we had seven other people join and their name was Kowalski, Kowalska, Kowski. So it ended up being one Italian name against seven Polish names. The seven Polish got less than, you know, 10 or 12% each, and the Italian got elected. Well, for some other reasons, uh, there ended up being a big investigation into corruption at City Hall in Chicago. Surprise, surprise. And uh, I decided to uh, leave again. What was the reason for the investigation? Uh, they claimed that people weren't working they, they, they Who were, claimed? The, the government claimed that people were uh, being paid but not working. So I'm pretty sure it was called uh, Ghost Payroll uh, Project or uh, Ghost Payroll. Um, and actually, uh, one of my close friends went away for about five and a half years because a Polish woman said that he sold her a liquor license, actually. So was that was part laundering? of the investigation. Could have been. You know, when the FBI gets involved, they, they throw everything out there. It's anything they can throw at you, they do. Um, but that was the second time that uh, I was involved. And so you I, evaded I them successfully. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I wasn't, uh, I, I, I wasn't the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, um, the target. Uh, they were targeting mostly politicians, and uh, I went to Italy. But the, the crazy thing was that when my friend Greg um, – I was in Alta, I was in Altamura, my town. He was going to court. The Polish woman shows up that he supposedly sold the liquor license to. They ask her to get up and put her hand on his shoulder. She puts her hand on his attorney's shoulder, and we're figuring we're all done. Uh, but instead, unfortunately, one of the Chicago politicians, Alderman, um, who had a heart condition, ended up collaborating with the FBA, FBI and signed a lot of documents saying that Greg did this, Greg did this, Greg did this, Greg did this. Greg gets convicted anyway, um, and then he needed to straighten things out with his family. He had his three children living with him. They were 14 years old, four, 10 to 14 years old. I send a check for $25,000 um, to make sure that he can um, stay outside what, between the time he was convicted and the time that they give him the sentencing. Mm you know, where he's going to go and uh, how much time. And uh, the FBI stands up in court and says, I'm a mobster hiding in Italy. Uh, Greg is going to fly to Italy. I mean, he, he, Greg was Polish. I mean, he wasn't, you know, he doesn't speak Italian. I, I have no idea what he's going to do in Italy. But mm -hmm. the FBI objected to me putting up the money for him to have that time to get his family in order, you know. So it, it's How would they say you're a mobster? Stuff. Did you ever have any kind of connections to the mob? Or the mafia. You know what? I grew up in Bridgeport. It was if you watched the, the, the film Casino, 
you got the two guys that got killed at the end, the Spalatro brothers. I think uh, they called them Santoro brothers. You uh, know, my ex-wife went to school with their daughter, one of their daughters. And the neighborhood was all those guys that, uh, you know, supposedly ran, the, you know, uh, um, Las Vegas back at the time, which they did, by the way. And, mm-hmm. you know, then the government decided to give it to the corrupt orations, so they knocked them out of there. But, yeah, I mean, you know, people could say anything. Um, I, you know, I... I'm a, I was in the military. I tried to be a good guy. All of my money was made legally. I have my, you know, I file my taxes every year, but people can say anything. So you never actually got popped or did any time for anything at all? No. I've been arrested for a bunch of stuff, but mostly kids' stuff. <laughs>